Gun raise. Gun raise. Gun point. My hands are up, bro. My hands are up. Hands up. Gun raise and point. Raise and point. That's good. Hands up. I will fucking kill you. Get back. Hands up. Get back. You're gonna kill him. He's trying to kill me. He's trying to kill me. Get back. What's your name, sir? Your name's Go Fuck Yourself, alright? Go Fuck Yourself. Thank you, sir. Hello, Officer Go Fuck Yourself. Officer Go Fuck Yourself is trying to kill me. I hope you guys are watching. He had to be told by another officer. He said, I'm pointing a gun at people right now for no reason. This guy, he just stole two sodas, like, fuck them, I'm gonna drink them. Hell nah. He just straight put him on the ground, bro, like daring somebody to touch him. Man, this shit crazy. Right, 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 right. All right, you die. Fuck off. Fuck away from me. Fuck away from me. Shit. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. You know who I am? I'm tired of this shit. He died. <laughs> this is the one to the store, up, dude. <laughs> this is crazy. What's up? What's up? What's up? Well, this is not how you do it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Well, now, the police finna pull up. Y'all call the police? Yeah, I didn't want yeah. He called you. Yeah, I didn't want that. Come he on, bagging bro. up. Out, he got his gun out. Out, oh, oh, shit. Out. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. They got their guns Drop out. It, bro. Oh my god. You said the police, we were making a statement about police training? Police training. Police are not psychologically trained as well as they used to be. Another thing that uh, they're doing these days too, they're, they're hiring a lot of veterans who have not, who can, who suffer from PTSD. And you, you know, they bring a veteran onto the police squad that's been over in Afghanistan. He can any, at any given moment, that fool could loop at any given moment. A lot of times they'll play games and, 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 and you know, you know how you, when you were the squad and a platoon and or a company or a, a battalion or a regiment, you have groups that get to know each other so well they can call each other all kind of racial slurs and they don't phase them because they know they have to depend on one another to survive and make yeah. it out. Kind of like us. But see, well, yeah, but that stuff don't that stuff don't fly when you get on with a lot of people. The civilian population doesn't understand that, mm. and they're not psycho they're not psychologically trained to deal with what's going on. So by them not being psychologically trained to deal with it, because you can beat a lot of people with your mind and talk Absolutely. and make them feel good about themselves so that to put your hands on them. These police officers want to go physical. It's like the young man up in New York, the big brother in New York, he just buried. He choked him out. And there was people standing right there at the cell phone. Now watch this. Well, it was very ironic that all of a sudden, the people that had, they were close, they recorded everything while they watched that boy just lay there and die instead of rendering CPR. And the coroner called it murder. Now all of a sudden, that man and his girlfriend all of a sudden have a gun charge, and then that even locked away. Yeah. What a, what a gun charge. You know, you talk now, about you, you talk you about these saying? soldiers maybe having these, you know, uh, vets having PTSD and getting on a police force. That's an interesting observation because if you're a veteran and you went with the VA, you there's a real challenge in trying to be diagnosed with PTSD. First of all, there's a stigma. Yep. There's a stigma attached to being, you know, saying somebody, well, you got PTSD. It's like you're some kind of a, a coward or a wuss that you came back and, and it was a, and you were affected by what you saw. And then even if you do try to go and get um, some kind of benefit for PTSD or even treatment for it, you know, the government, the VA is very, they make you jump, over, they jump through hoops and go through all types of different changes. That's right. That's right. Depression alone, depression alone is there's a stigma attached to it. Yes, it is. It is indeed. And some people, some of these cats actually become suicidal. They they will take they'll take you along with them. I had a marine that was a former marine. He went PTSD uh, out in San Bernardino, <clears throat> killed 
three sheriff's deputies with an AR-15. The boy knew how to lay down suppressing fire and advance while firing. That's military tactics, bro. I'm, I'm advancing on you while I'm firing with an AR-15. You got a you got a Glock 40. You're not gonna get a shot off with an AR-15 coming at you. And you damn sure ain't gonna get off one if I switch to AR-15, drop it, and pick up a chopper, which is an AK-47. You damn, you're not gonna do nothing. The best thing you usually do is run for your damn life because that AK-47 coming through that door. Yeah, you know. Exactly. So what they're doing, what he did, he killed three sheriff's deputies before they finally got him. It was suicide by a cop. But he killed those boys before they got it. And the thing, the sad thing about it was two of the three sheriff deputies that he killed, one was a National Guardsman, he's in the Army, and the other one was a Marine Reservist. And they had never been trained because of the fact that those people have never seen combat. That's why I, I very, very vehemently defend the point that eventually they're going to push hard enough to where Anonymous is not going to have to say anything. There are people like me sitting out there just going to start pushing back and they're not gonna like it. You gonna have a cop one of these days shoot the wrong person that's connected to the right person and it's gonna be total chaos. You know, one, another thing- there's, uh, there's a lot of people that are just waiting for it to happen. They want yeah, to I, mean, I mean, down here in Florida, look at the Zimmerman thing. Zimmerman walks and it was cold-blooded murder. That was a guy that was people all the day. They raised the hell, but they're not realizing it. He was connected to some very powerful people uh, in this country for him to walk like that. He's yeah, driving through all these states. All these states, the bottom line is, eventually, he must try to forget that America don't forget. It might be five, 10, 15 years later. Well, you get, yeah, I mean, it could be just like the MS-13s and the, and the Mexican Mafia. You might do something to them now. They might not do nothing to you for 10, 15, 20 years. You do something in your 30s, you die when you're 50, and they'll send somebody to let you know this is from so-and-so and so for what you did 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, he hasn't gotten, Zimmerman hasn't gotten away. It's only a matter of time because he's still a hot subject right now. But if they're, eventually, somebody's laying for him and they'll, they'll end up getting him. And it's going to be so clean that whoever's in power that's helped him get escape the jaws of the law, because they probably wrote the law, they'll pay for They will never find him. They will never find him. And that's the thing I keep telling people. There are a lot of people that are in society was that as a while society gonna start pushing back and what America does not need is an inter is an inter an inter inter, inter, inter border war, another civil war. It's not gonna be the North against the South. It's gonna be the it's gonna be guerrilla warfare against the police department if these people don't start policing their police and these officers. And see the bad thing about it is that you got about five of you, you take you take about two or three bad officers. They can run it for an entire precinct of maybe 150 officers. Well, two or three bad ones can run it for the whole neighborhood. Oh, I know, I know some cops, man, and I know a lot of them are really good guys. They really care, and I know, I know of scumbags. There's scumbags in every group. AJ, and that's you, what's making it hard for them. Huh? When you say it's like the military, where you you have guys who you know are out of line. At the mm -hmm. same time, you know if you ever get in a situation and that cat's at your back, that's somebody good to have at your back. So you have, you know, so yeah. there would be pressure not to not to give that guy up because, you know, after all, your brother's in arms. What would you say is, is what is your assessment of the training, you know, being Forest Recon Ranger with your experience? And, I mean, you, you work with law enforcement, you know, right now. So do you... How would you assess the training of this cop that shot this cat six times? And, and from what your perception is, is the story of what happened? From from what the media has fed us, because we never, never know what's going to happen. It's their side, our side, and the truth. Uh, it's three sides of every story. From what the media has uh, sanitized and fed us to hit anybody, I mean, one round, he was a big kid. He was a big kid. He was like an offensive lineman getting ready to go to college this past Monday. One round striking him in the arm would have showed that he meant the cop meant business. If they were fighting, and if he did reach for the officer's gun, 35 feet away, the threat is neutralized. 35 feet away. What, would he, what should he have done? Call for backup. Why didn't he use his taser? The boy was not drunk and he was not on anything. The taser disrupts your nervous system. I've seen 
uh, big guys like like Profit get put down with that taser, bro. That taser ain't no joke, especially if it's the one that's got a hundred thousand plus votes in it. It'll light your, it'll light you. You gonna ride the lightning, bro? Oh yeah, you gonna ride the lightning, bro? You gonna ride? You ride the lightning? They got hundred thousand votes in that thing. Yes, sir. They got. They can either they can either launch it or they can just press it against your body and light you up. What is like a little dart? Yes, this little dart with hooks in it. Now oh, that's so shit. Now it seems it seems to me that if, like, here we go about training. If the guys have, if the cop is having an altercation with a guy at the car, and they're at that point where they're going back and forth, you know, they, they actually have physical contact with each other. It would be just as easy for him right. to grab that taser as to grab his pistol. That's right. That's right, and that's why I was saying that comes from that that that, that to shoot that boy that many times. That was personal. I think Craig was saying that he thought it was. Do you think it, Do you think it was personal or way overreacting and no both whatsoever? Both, because it was personal. It was overreacting because number one, who's to say that he didn't have a, a run in with the kid before? I don't know. I, that's, absolutely, I agree with you 100 percent on that. Just just opposite that, but he could never get the kid because the kid was always in the right. I mean, he wasn't doing nothing. He could talk as much junk as he wanted to. Talk. You know, if he's not putting his hands on you and all that kind of stuff, if you didn't tell him much as you want, but see, a lot of police officers are stepping out of the outside of the scope of what they're supposed to do. You can let a citizen talk. A citizen can talk trash all they want, as long as they don't advance on you and in a threatening way. You can, they can, they have the right. They can, they have their rights. They can talk as much as they want to. If they put, if it, if you become a life-threatening situation, the force can, the force continuum is presence. You know, first you just show up. Then you start to dialogue, and then you go to the the, the, the least lethal weapons first. You want to go to your you want to go to your OC, then baton, then deadly force. Thirty five feet did not justify deadly force. Thirty five feet, he could have. He got shot thirty five feet away. Yeah. Thirty five feet, bro. Yeah, that's thirty five feet. The first video I saw was the one. That's why I said it was personal. The first video I saw was the one the lady shot from the window. But she was she had just moved to the neighborhood and said, Oh my god, they just killed this boy in front of me. And everyone I saw was like right afterwards. But everyone everyone who's test who everyone whose eyewitness comments I heard on the videos made it seem like the cop was trying to manhandle this kid and the kid decided not to be manhandled and then it escalated from there. And you see these cops in videos all the time attack people violently because they weren't obeyed quickly enough or obeyed, you know, with enough as they as they feel respect, you know, or whatever. They feel like, you know, they're supposed to be respected uh, instantaneously. There goes that the ego again. But, you know, but now my question is, so now, you know, especially because of what's happened in, in Missouri, you see more and more videos of cop violence, murder by cop, suicide by cop, all this kind of stuff. As a citizen, how do you feel about having a confrontation with a cop? I mean, it's now at some point you have to decide: Am I going to trust his mercy, or am I going to just, or am I set on defend myself? What if it had been, you know, it might be you with your wife, you know, and the cop decides to manhandle your wife? What are you supposed to do? Trust that he's not, that there's not going to be, you know, um, some kind of sanctioned, you know, murder because she supposedly broke a law or, or attacked the cop? Or are you supposed to? You know, take things into your own hands. You know, now it seems like as you're supposed to be able to trust the police as as their authority and and feel confident that you can trust them to have mercy on you. And it's, it's becoming more and more you're taking you know you're risking your life every time you have a confrontation with a police officer. Well, I trust frankly, Mexican cops down here work more than I would the guys in the United States. Quite frankly. Well, if you ask me that question, you ask me proposing that, that question. I'm gonna tell you right now. If you are causing my wife, I'm gonna catch a case. <laughs> I'm gonna catch a case. I'm gonna catch a case. I mean, if you search her, it better be a female searching her. And if the female searching her wrong, I'm gonna catch a case. Cause I'm gonna move fast enough on you before you can get that weapon out that host. I'm gonna be on you like your skin. It's not, gonna be, it's not gonna be quick. It's not gonna be no tussle. No, do no tussling. I'm gonna hit you three places. It's a done deal. I'm going. I'm See, going. To three, I'm, going to, I'm going to three hots in the cot, bro. But I'm gonna catch case. You believe that? 
<laughs> I'm thing, going to prison. See, there ain't is, no doubt about it. I'm going to prison. This is and this person uh, taking your ass out. I'm this, taking you out exactly. He's and, and anybody t- touch me now up in the up in the prison, I'm up in the cop building because the cop was wrong. And you know they like to try to beat you up when they get you in there. Right. You know, as soon as them handcuffs come off, I'm fucking you up. <laughs> the, the thing about it. Reverend Rhino is like that's my reverend, that's my pastor, and that's that's my pastor. <laughs> that's, that's my pastor. All right, T D J, you hear that? That's, that's my why, pastor. That's why I always say. That's why I always say there's only one reverend I'm following. Because <laughs> he's gonna have a gun. Look, you gonna catch a case anyway? I'd be like, he's a, he's a man. He's a man of the cloth. Fuck. I'm this, following his ass. You got to get the gun, too. You got to get to the gun. You can have that gun on you. I know a lot of people had weapons on them and never got them out. Exactly. Because the person knew what they, they knew what they was doing. Yeah, a knife, a knife is a knife is better, better a close, a close quarter draw weapon. A knife is, is much superior to a gun. But my point is, like one of this shit, right, Reg? It's like this. Exactly. That's where you start from. I see your problem. You're not getting enough sleep. I'm going to help you with that. I'm going to give you a nap. That ink, pen, that, ink, that ink pen is just as deadly. Ink pen, yes it is. Yes it is. Saw that last night, man. Like That's pretty say, wild. Three or four places. They, they do a good version of that in the Born, one of those Born movies. They have a good Kali type thing with, with the pen. But, but check this out, Rev. You made a good point. You know, you said you're going to catch a case. The point is, you're going to catch a case either way. You're going to catch a case whether you help yeah. your wife in that situation or not. Still oh yeah, I might as well go case. all the way. You, I might as well go all the way in. If you open your mouth, go all the way. Let's go. Open your mouth. You resisting the rest. You gonna kick, you gonna catch a case. Now you gotta face your lady too. She gonna let her get beat down. Maybe if no, we going in. I'm going. I'm going in, bro. Yeah. I'm going in, and I'm sending some. I'm sending somebody to Christ. Now, and this, <laughs> this that's my pastor. I believe in Jesus, and you will too. <laughs> I'm sending you. Look. I'm giving my regards. Look, I'll see you when I get there. Look. It's 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 a real it's a real situation. Somebody trying to call in. It's a real situation. Um and and like I was stressing earlier, my real concern is that the authorities have this this need to be in control no matter what, even if there's peace. So even if people protest peacefully, they still want to impose right. in, in, they still want to impose a curfew because they want to have control. Okay, you guys can protest until now, but we're not gonna watch y'all day, so be done by you know. That's like your parents tell, tell you not to be angry. You can be mad for between nine and five, Monday through Friday, but on Saturday you ask for to chill the fuck down. But <laughs> we will tear gas, taser, and shoot you. They had live ammunition, live weapons pointed at unarmed civilians. They targeted Al Jazeera. They said Al Jazeera must have had a sign on their equipment that said Al Jazeera because they tear gassed them, then turned their lights off, then pointed their cameras at the ground. And the reason this is such a big deal now is because the media has been targeted because that wasn't part of the rules. When they arrested those first two journalists, the publisher of the paper made a call and the police chief released them with no charges. But then the cops kept going after journalists. So now the journalists... What I tell you. Go ahead. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, you gotta look at one thing, and a lot of people don't see this. A lot of they got helicopters flying around and all that stuff, but helicopters can't see in two or three. Can't see inside two or three story building. They might they can see heat signatures, but they won't be able to see who's got a weapon trained on them. Mm-hmm. If you are low down enough, just like just like. In, like in Nicaragua when they had the guerrilla warfare. Those were people that were fighting back against the government. If you are trained up to fight and you want to shoot a bunch of innocent people and give it a blood back, you better be prepared to die because you don't know who's back up in them buildings with a weapon trained on your ass. We talked about the fact I know we talked about the fact I know fact that- that yeah. um, these veterans are being trained in in urban warfare, and and we see we're seeing urban warfare in the streets of America, but there's no training for the kind of urban warfare they would have in America because they're not dealing with no. ex recon rangers, ex you know, ex special forces, veterans who they released from service from Afghanistan and from from uh, uh, Iraq that are now on the streets. They've got a bunch of neat, a bunch of newbies over there now, and most of the experienced warriors are now on the streets trying to deal with the VA and trying to deal with getting back into society. 
So those yeah, they, 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 they are, they are, they are, they are powder keg, bro. Just give them a reason. Yeah, yeah. That's all it is with them. Give them a reason. The, 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 the sergeant that was in the Marine sergeant that was in New York when New York had that protest two years ago. He was all up in the face. They said they was in his face. They tell him to go on. He said, I'm "Not going anywhere." The big right. guy. Yeah, I yeah. remember him. The, the big, big brother. Dude. You, yeah, the big dude. You, you, you hey, put your hey, hands. Three, three you minutes. Your... I'll be right back, man. All right. You said you put your hands on me. It's gonna be hell to tell the captain. Right. You put your hands on me. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, and he, they left him alone. Actually, they left him alone because, in actuality, the way you think about it, is it really worth losing? a good officer, a good cop over a protest and you know this guy ain't wrapped too tight, is it really worth losing? Because you don't know if he got buddies in the crowd. He was standing out there in camis with his old uniform on, but how do you, who do you know standing next to him could be happening? You don't know that. Do you really think, you those, know that. You really think those cops are that aware of what's going on? Because it seems to me that they just they no, got the power to no, pass, they jump out and jump on they're, they're, they're not thinking. They're not even thinking about people who are watching as witnesses. Let alone trying to help no. somebody. They're not watching who is witnesses. They're not watching as they're, they're thinking they can do things with impunity now. Because somebody somewhere is puppeteering the strings to make them believe that as human beings and as as because you got that badge and uniform that, that you do something. Let one of them do the wrong thing to the right person that's connected to the right people and watch how that shit blow up. It's gonna blow. It's gonna blow sky high like a nuclear holocaust. For the right, for the right group of people, because like you could be out with some yeah. of your boys, like coming back from from martial arts training or something. I, I have seen mm -hmm. so many attacks with these cops that like it's three cops, the three cats ran up and grabbed yeah. them with a rear naked choke. They'd all be done because they're not even, they're oblivious to what's going on around them when they're beating the shit out of somebody. If the, if the, oh if yeah. The, if the citizenry wanted to. Defending injustice, all it would take is the fact that people just grab, grab the cops and say, you know, we're going to hold y'all for the real before you show up. Because obviously, you are Right, right, because uh, most of these, most of the, a lot of these officers that run around doing stuff and killing folk and doing this craziness, it's just a matter of time. And sometime, another thought that crossed my mind, it could, these guys that be operating as officers and not getting charged could be operators that have been implanted into the system to cause the chaos. To do exactly that. Well, see, we talked about that earlier. I mean, in order for martial law to be established or evoked, it would take a confrontation between citizenry and the police. The police would be overwhelmed, and then, right. and then you bring in the heavy artillery. But right now, the police have right. jumped the gun with their own heavy artillery, you know, so it never it never comes to that. And uh, what you're saying makes sense is why there's no, there doesn't be any consistent behavior between the police department, because they have these people who go out and do these things, and then as brothers in arms, they support them, but even the other cops that have to be, you know, in the, back in the, in the, the, uh, the jailhouse saying, man, what, what were you thinking? You know, what, what was going through your mind? You know, they show a unified there's got to be dissension in the ranks. That, or he could have been just, a, uh, they could be, like I said, they could be infiltrators. Mm -hmm. They could be, uh, they could be agents just put into position to make stuff happen and then go back and then, because they, there was no, there was no trial or nothing because they can't find an officer because he was one of those people that don't exist. Mm -hmm. They could be doing that to cause the chaos because if you can't get chaos over, see the chaos overseas, the the made up wars overseas, that money machine is going dry because people are not supporting it anymore. 